Yeah, folks, welcome back to Delboy's Garage. This is uh, Delboy's Conservatory at the minute. It's where I keep all the bits and bobs when I use it, so it's just for sort of storing stuff, so the garage has got a bit more space. So to show you, this is where they've lived for the last 24 hours, the old side panels. And uh, as you can see, 28 degrees. That's the afternoon, it's uh, 6 p.m. now um, in the evening. That sun's pretty low in the sky and it's been about 32, 33 in here. So that has uh, seriously hardened that off. No fingernail marks, nothing. That's a lovely finish. So time to get them out to the garage. They've been sat in 28 degree heat even now. They've been probably up to 35 or more. Uh, so they're as tough as old boots now. Ready for a good bit of 1200 grit flattage. Get it down nice and smooth and then just put some finish coats on them. So let's get cracking. Okay, the first job, before any other, I need to make some fine paper. As I said previously, I bought these five sheets of wet and dry for a couple of quid, 199, uh, and they're perfectly good. Um, the super fine 1200 grit stuff is expensive. You have to buy a pack of six or seven sheets. It's about four or five quid, and it's just too expensive. But what I've got left is these really coarse sheets uh, which I'm I'm just not going to use, not for the foreseeable, because I don't plan any more filler for a minute unless I come up with something. So I'm going to just do this little trick again. It's ever so easy. I'm just going to make some fine paper from some coarse paper. It's obviously very easy. You just need a reasonably sharp edge, and you just rub the paper face to face. Use it against itself, and it will make fine paper. It'll just knock all the beef out of it and all the grit uh, and effectively give you something you can use to get that nice and flat up. So just as an example of that one first, all you do is get the paper laid out. Just sanding the paper down. Still perfectly serviceable wet and dry but it's a lot finer than that. Trick I suppose to make sure that it's nice and even, you don't want a really gritty patch that's going to leave any lines, so take your time. You don't have to rub hard, it's not, you don't have to lean on it, you'll just kill it all together and waste it. That makes a lovely fine paper. We're going to wet sand these to get a nice usable finish take out those little dimples that the, the rust specs made. They're effectively treating that as an undercoat, which is cool. I mean, that's almost gone, but it's still doing the job of filling that. There we are. Now that is about a 1200 grit paper now. There's one piece, I just need one more, one for each. When you're using them wet, they last for ages. It doesn't, uh, doesn't clog up because it's nice and soapy. Let's do another one. Okay, this is just hot or warm soapy water with loads of washing up liquid. Washing up liquid again is a brilliant degreaser. It dissolves all, all grease and wax and everything. Works really well. Nice and wet. And in the straight lines that we said about yesterday, just feel for it. You can kind of feel the paper biting into the gloss taking it off, it kind of keep lots of water on it, keep washing the grit away so it doesn't bung up into little beads, clog the paper and then make scratches. Really this is something that's quite simple, don't need to show you every inch of this, you can do it. This is the only tip I would say is take your time, don't lean on it and just feel it, the little marks you can feel them with your finger. Wearing rubber again, rubber gloves, just to keep the grease from the skin off of it. Give it every chance. Wherever you see a little mark, just rub it. Gradually take them all out. Okay, here we pretty much are. This is the second one. Pretty much done. Just time to water that off. That's it. I'll just dry that off. That's it. Just 
dry the worst off. That's now nicely sanded back. So we get some fresh paper, clean those up, and time to get a tap coat on. Once again, this is just to lay a very thin coat of material over to go tacky. Does what it says on the tin. It's not designed to coat up. It's just there to form a bond between the dry stuff and the wet stuff. So. So. That's it. Tack coat is the lightest amount. Just a tiny bit. Just going to give that three, four minutes to flash off. It's time for the first coat in anger. Here we are, that's the tack coats. Uh, done. I've just done two tack coats in the end, just to give it a nice sheen. And that's now bonded. It's gone nice and sticky. Um, I've got to get cracking really, because the temperature now is uh, what 18.3. When I brought these in after cleaning them just now, it was 19. So every coat, it's dropping about half a degree. Uh, and this stuff kind of stops working and decides to go home. At about 14 or so degrees and just doesn't work anymore so uh, I better get cracking I'm just gonna do because of that uh, when it's cold the paint lays on but it doesn't cure as it's meant to so I'm gonna do th instead of a heavy coat and then 15 minute break I'm gonna do thin very light coats like I've been doing uh, every five minutes and then every six and every seven as it goes along just build up the layers uh, and afterwards they'll get tea cut and polished back, make a nice finish. But I just made the mistake yesterday, just because it was too cold, of laying on too much paint and it reacted horribly. So far it's fine. And you can see that painting uh, with aerosol pans is a bit of a lottery. You can make a tiny mistake and now start the paint job, so practice makes perfect. Uh, get yourself an old tank or an old crash helmet that you're never going to use again, whatever, a bit of sheet steel, anything. Practice before you put it on your bed. As you can see, it's dropping with every coat as the evening's wearing off. So let's keep coating them up. I think, but four thin coats. I have a feel of the can, but some of you set up, you can have about eight, maybe ten, and that will polish out lovely. Let's keep okay. going. Last coat. Can's warmed up under the under the tap. One more pass. Okay, there it is, and that's the finish for tonight. As you can see, the temperature's dropped right down 16 and a half now. So that's about as cool as I can tolerate. Uh, otherwise, you start to get orange peel developing too much, and I don't want too much, because I've just got the finish that I always hoped I'd get. And it is a bit of a lottery with rattle cans. Uh, this finish is superb. It's slightly orange peely, and that's gonna float out. I'm gonna put it in the conservatory in a minute, and it's gonna float out over the next 24 hours. Remember it's about 32, 33 degrees and if it's a warmer day tomorrow it could be even as much as 35 in that conservatory and that will really float them out. So they'll go great. I want a factory finish. I don't want a glass finish. We can easily do that. We just flat it with 1200 paper, get that lovely wet sand and then get it like glass. Don't want that. It looks fake. It doesn't look right. I want a slightly factory finish but a lovely deep rich gloss and that's what they're going to be. So all they're going to need is a bit of uh, compound buffing to get that nice shine. Uh, and at the moment they're shining almost as much as they need to anyway and when paint shines out of the gun or out of the can you know you've pretty much got it right so that's them 
I'm going to get them in conservatory now, tuck them up for the night, then by this time tomorrow we'll be able to fit them back on the bike uh, and start on the next fun job. So that's been the painting of the side panels. Thanks for watching Delboy's Garage. See you next time.